lay me down in the cold, cold ground, where before many more have gone. Lay me down in the cold, cold ground, where before many more have gone. When they come, I will stand my ground. Stand my ground, I will not be afraid. Thoughts of home take away my fear. Sweat and blood hide my veil of tears. Once a year, pray a prayer for me. Close your eyes and remember me. Never more shall I see the sun. For I fell to a German's gun. Lay me down in the cold, cold ground. Where before many more have gone. Lay me down in the cold, cold ground. Where before many more have gone. Where before many more have gone. This is the Mac Oligarchy Podcast, and I'm your host, Tim McClone. That's a poem that I keep in my desk. It's in memory of Sergeant Charles Stewart McKenzie, Stan Seaford Highlanders, who, along with many others, gave up his life so that we could live free. Just a little background on this, Sergeant McKenzie is a, is a laminate written and sung by Joseph uh, McKenzie uh, in memory of his great-grandfather who was killed in combat during uh, World War I. It was used in the 2002 movie We Were Soldiers, starring Mel Gibson. I'd recommend that movie. It's epic. That's how I found out about the poem and the song. And it really touched me, and I've had it for a while. And uh, I think it's more important now than ever. So he wrote The Haunting Laminate after the death of his wife, Christine, and in memory of his great-grandfather, um, a sergeant in the Sea Fort Highlanders, who along with hundreds of his brothers-in-arms from the, uh, you know, in Scotland, went to fight in World War I. Yeah, he uh, died at the age of 33 while defending one of his badly injured fellow soldiers during hand-to-hand -hand trench warfare. His gravestone states that he died on April 9th, 1970. Excuse me, 1917. So I mentioned a while back when I started this journey with a podcast and podcast number one, the reason I'm doing this is right now in this the most cons consequential election in American history, what's on the ballot right now is free speech. Take away this, the, the abortion issue. Take away the economy even. Inflation. All the wars right now. The most important item on the ballot is free speech. And that's why I started this podcast. Because one party wants to take free speech away from you. So if you're going to be a myopic individual and say, you know, I'm just voting on abortion. Ladies and gentlemen, abortion was always a state's right issue. Roe v. Wade should have been overturned. And it just got kicked back to the states. And liberal states got more liberal and some red states tightened up. But you can still get an abortion. Believe in the Constitution. Because 80% of you morons have never lived all over the world and don't know what's going on in other countries. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights, is the most unbelievable document ever written in history. And we need to get back to the Bill of Rights and the law and order. Law and order. So what's on the ballot right now is free speech. I don't care about a guy's Twitter account. I don't care about a guy's hair. I don't care that Joe Biden's cognitively deficient. He was cognitively deficient before he ran for the three or four years ago. We all know that. Who the hell's running the country? We all know Camilla Harris can't put two senses together and has no record and she never won a primary vote and just got thrown in there and they did a coup against Joe Biden. Totally undemocratic. It's unbelievable. You want to talk about democracy, the Republicans had a primary. Donald Trump's the duly elected nominee, 100% period. But the other side just said, we don't want the people to decide. We'll decide. The elites will decide. The oligarchs will decide. That's not on the ballot. What's on the ballot is free speech. And the Democrats want to take that away from you. And it's the most important fundamental right we have. Elon Musk, he did a great thing with what he did with Twitter. I got issues with everyone. I got issues with Republicans and Democrats. I'm a libertarian. But 
Whether you're a libertarian, Democrat, Republican, you should believe in free speech. Well, look what's going on in Brazil. One side wants to take that away from you. It amazes to me, like on the abortion issue, you have some Catholic priests and nuns. You have the Democrats that want to, there's legislation. I mean, the bottom line, it's out there. There's legislation that, hey, we can kill a baby after it's born if you want to kill it. We can kill a baby in the third trimester. For no reason either. Not just not just rape or incest or no reason. Those bills are on the table. Those are the Democrats. But you're not going to vote for Donald Trump because you think abortion is going to be taken away. And these people want to take away free speech. These people have started wars. These people want to tax the hell out of you and regulate the hell out of you. They don't believe in small businesses. They don't believe in entrepreneurship. I'm a Kennedy Democrat at heart back in the day. This party's gone off a cliff. I'm a sensible, middle-of-the-road individual, for Christ's sake. These people have gone absolutely insane, and so have the rhino Republicans. But one party cares about the people. I care about the people. People are hurting right now. 60% of Americans only have a $400 in savings, enough for a one-time emergency. No one can explain. How is that a healthy economy? We have Camilla Harris and other people, this issue did come up and they just laughed about it. That's not a healthy country. That's not a first world country. You want to tell me the jobs report is real? The 800,000 jobs just got shown to be false. And now the new jobs go, 200,000 jobs created. Look at all the tech jobs. 60,000 plus were laid off in 23. We had two consecutive quarters of negative growth to GDP. We are in a recession right now. And everyone knows that who is in the know. We are in a recession. Joe Biden administration is the first administration to change the metrics to say we're not. It's happened 10 plus times in World War II when we've had two consecutive negative quarters of growth to GDP. It's always been a recession. We are in a recession right now, going to a global recession. We have massive layoffs going right now in this country. So ladies and gentlemen, when you go to that ballot box, and I recommend you go to the ballot box and you send in your ballot, free speech is what you're voting for. That's the foundation of our country. And one side wants to 86 it from you. Stop being myopic and dumb and voting on bullshit. One issue. Take away the most important thing besides free speech. Is the, it's the economy, stupid. And these people have destroyed the economy. Period. 100%. So that's why I'm doing this, because I believe, you know, it's the tough speech that, uh, you know, I want to hear. We can agree to disagree. That's what's great about this country. I want to hear people that disagree with me. They have a right to disagree with me. You have a right to say whatever you want to say and let the people figure it out. No, but the Democrats will say you're too stupid to have a driver's license. You know, the most fundamental right you have is voting. When I go to get a credit card, I have to show ID. My license. When I go to a ball game, they you know try to get a beer. They ask me for an ID sometimes. So don't give me this argument. The most fundamental right you have is to vote in elections, and you should have to have an ID to do it. And if you're an illegal immigrant, you should not be able to vote in elections, even though on paper, but we got we got people voting that are illegal. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So and I get it. It's about political power. The one side is basically given up on the working class. The working class is the party of the Democrats now. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all the billionaires are voting for Democrats. Yes, Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, some others are not going to be voting, but why do all the billionaires vote Democrat? It's so interesting to me. Now they've lost the unions now, but we all know about the, you know, under the table and special interests and lobbyists, but um, you're voting for free speech in this election the most consequential election in U.S. history. I got problems with both sides. But I want to hear the other side on Twitter. I want to see what you have to say. We had one side when they controlled Twitter that took off conservative voices and other voices. Totally wrong. Work with intelligence agencies to censor Americans. It's disgusting. Every American should be appalled by it. I want to hear what Democrats have to say. I don't want them censored. Let me ask you something. Did Donald Trump uh, censor liberals when he was president of the United States? Did he take? Did he? Did he go after Twitter? And, no, he did. Is he going to go after it now? No. 
Is he going to go after your free speech? No. Is he going to go after his political opponents? No. He's just going to do some law and order? He won't. He'll move on. He could have went after Hillary Clinton and prosecuted her, but he didn't. He won't. Because Republicans don't play that game. I mean, why would anyone trust Camilla Harris to stop the invasion of the border when her own administration did everything possible to create the invasion and then also gaslit the Americans into believing it wasn't happening? That's the bottom line. I mean, the last administration passed executive orders, stay in Mexico, that worked. No one deserves to come to this country illegally. You have to be vetted. We should, since we're the first world country, supposedly, and the greatest country in the world, there should be merit. You should have to come here and be able to speak the language and show you're going to contribute to society and not just go on welfare. We are the biggest welfare state in the world. And if we weren't giving free handouts, no one would come here. Trust me. So this individual said, hey, a booming economy under the last administration, our southern border under control, energy independence, less regulations that crippled small businesses. You know, Elon can drain the drop and get rid of big government waste, and I'll be proud to execute President Trump's peace through strength policy. If you call that terrible, you, sir, are a fucktard. That's Kid Rock. But, uh, you know, his choice of words is uh, interesting, but uh, I'd have to agree with Kid Rock. Uh, I like the booming economy under the last administration. I like that the, the southern border was under control. And there were less murders by rapists and murderers coming into this country. Uh, people that are unvetted. Majority of people coming across the border are military age men. Over 100 countries, not vetted. Never had to get vaccinated for COVID, by the way. Disgusting. We don't know who the hell's coming across. Terrorist groups have been caught. Chinese nationals. I mean, come on. You don't think we should, you don't want, you don't want a strong border? You want just want open borders? I mean, this is just common sense policy. If the Democrats were saying it, I would agree with them. This is unbelievable. It's not, you know, right or left. It's just common sense. That's all I want is common sense. I'm the middle of the road individual. Don't hate me. I just believe in common sense policy. My friend got his face slashed on Melrose by an illegal. What about all these criminals? I have another friend who got robbed. Guy was arrested five times and put back on the street because of the prosecutor's policies in these major cities. So am I a bad person that I believe that there should be no more censoring people who disagree with the government? I, I you know, I, I believe in that. Is that, I mean, I just believe that uh, there should be no more censoring people who disagree with the government. No more lawfare against political opponents. Whether it's Barack Obama or unless it's an egregious treasonish, and there was treasonous behavior on one side, but I don't believe there should be lawfare against Joe Biden or Barack Obama, Donald Trump, unless it's terrible. These four indictments, they're all, they've all blown up in their face, and now CNN and everyone's talking about it. You, they pushed too far, and they should have never brought them because it turned the American people. Democrats lost votes because of it. You don't do that against a political candidate, and it backfired. It was completely wrong. If Donald Trump wasn't running for president, none of these indictments would have happened. Give me a break. And it should scare everyone that someone 30 years later can say in a mall that, hey, I mean, I don't want to get into it, but it's just unbelievable. What about no more forever wars? I know we got to keep the military saucy and those defense contractors happy and Raytheon and all these companies that uh, Lockheed want you to buy uh, tanks, weapons, start wars, fund both sides of wars. I, it's never going to be stopped under either administration, but maybe maybe guys just say, you know what, maybe we'll take a break every now and then, not go totally crazy, not be totally greedy. But we had peace under the last administration. No one can deny that. I mean, that goofball now, um, he must be shooting for a job. Mark Cuban even said in our podcast, yes, we had peace under the last administration. There were no wars. Donald Trump stopped the warmongering Republicans and Democrats from going into Syria. You had nut jobs under Donald Trump's presidency that wanted to start a war with Iran. He stopped it. Do you understand that? There was no wars under that guy. So I'm, I'm sick of the forever wars and Americans dying for bullshit reasons. How about no more open borders and human trafficking and fentanyl that comes in with it? 100,000 plus people have died of fentanyl. 
2020, 21 under Joe Biden now. It's worse than it was under Trump. You know, fentanyl comes in uh, through China and then goes to Mexico and they have Chinese national Chinese labs. China, China guys are there in Mexico working with the Mexican government to bring this in and hurt our country. But now who cares? They're just dirtbags who want to do fentanyl anyway, so let them die, right? It's not just, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just the drain on the system of money and people getting gift cards, which they are, and hotels. It's all been proven true. Don't give me this bullshit that no one's getting a Visa gift card, no one's getting a cell phone, clothing. They're getting plane tickets in the middle of the night to whatever city they want to go to, and that is happening. It's disgusting. It shouldn't be happening. But it's the human trafficking, and I've harped on this. Human trafficking is a $35 billion a year business. That's why they keep the open border open. And, so, and dirtbag Republicans are responsible for this too. Because, see, you can sell a child not once, but twice, but five, ten times. More than cocaine. It's big money. So if you're one of these hardcore liberals, oh, we should have open borders. Allow everyone. Because there's an open border, it's causing drugs, human trafficking. The cartels are pushing deeper into the interior, up to the Midwest. They're just not on the border states anymore. It's because of an open border. You know, in the, in the ominous spending bills that I was against, that Democrats and Republicans did, and that's what I was mad about Trump doing that too, but he had to fight Mitch McConnell and these fools, uh, they put a lot of border spending in for Ukraine, Jordan, and eight, eight countries, by the way, to uh, protect their borders. What about our border? So you have one side that wants an open border. Are you going to tell me you honestly believe in that? No, Tim, but I don't like this guy's hair. I don't like this guy. He looks fat in a suit. He wears over big suits and you know, he kind of says some brash things. Let me tell you right now, you want to be president of the United States, you want a narcissist in there. Barack Obama's a narcissist. Joe Biden's a narcissist. Barack Obama was just better at hiding it. He's all about the money himself. Never had a real job, was a community organizer in Chicago. <clears throat> and that's it. Never had foreign affairs experience. And I've say, say this, you know, Donald Trump was traveling all over the world meeting with leaders, by the way, before he was president, giving to Democrats and Republicans. And he was a Democrat before he was a Republican. He was actively involved. When you're building a global brand in real estate, you're working with big power brokers in business and finance and real estate. And he met with heads of state. But I'm just saying, it's all a bunch of bullshit, whether you're a Democrat. I don't, you don't need to have foreign affairs experience to be president of the United States. It's the team you surround yourself with is a big part of that. So that's all bullshit on both sides. But here's a guy that didn't have any, Barack Obama. And he was a junior senator for a New York Minute and he became president. And the stuff coming out of his mouth now is really disgusting. I mean, he's all for the dreamers. Okay, they put some dreamers on Martha's Vineyard and 24 hours they got him out of there. That guy's got a 10 plus million dollar house in Martha's Vineyard, 50 feet from the water. And 99% of Martha's Vineyard is white, not black. Maxine Waters' um, district is in Inglewood. She doesn't own a house in Inglewood. She owns a $4.7 million house in Bel Air or around there. You believe that? So I guess, you know, am I a bad person? I don't want any more open borders, human traffic, and fentanyl that comes in. We need to put the military on the border and close it up. How about them apples? But trust me, it's not going to get fully closed under Trump. He'll be, he'll be fought by Republicans and Democrats. The stay in Mexico policy might be able to reinstitute that and curtail it a little bit and have proper vetting. But for all you hardcore open border freaks, it's never going to go away. So what about no more putting Americans last? You know? Can we put Americans first? Is that such a bad policy or a slogan? I mean, you're coming to our country. What about our country? You know, our country's falling apart. 60% of Americans only have $400 in savings, yet we're giving all this money to foreign countries. I don't know. I don't think that's such a bad thing. Put Americans first. You know, so, you know, we have disasters and we're quick to give uh, billions to other countries, but now FEMA has been drained, which has been 100% true. Mayorkas did say that uh, there's no money for FEMA. They didn't project for future hurricanes. They don't have it. And they got caught only giving $750. I mean, give me a break. These people are getting screwed. I know some people in that area. It's disgusting. They don't have the money. They did use FEMA money for migrants. They did. What about no more allowing narcissistic failed male athletes in girls' sports? Is that such a bad policy? We have narcissistic men that can't compete with other men. So they say, you know what? I'm going to become a woman and dress as a woman and compete with women. You know, they got different chromosomes. They have testosterone. They're bigger. They are stronger, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't even give me that argument. There's two, you know. So is that such a bad thing? Not, not allowing males and 
women's sports. I don't believe in that. What about no more child mutilation surgery? You know, I don't think we should be talking about straight sex in schools with children when they're five years old or eight years old. So don't get mad at me. You know, we shouldn't be talking about transgender or straight sex. Do you really believe that? And that's the, the state doesn't own your kids. And one side wants the state to own your kids. That's the Democrats. You believe in that? I'm sorry. I believe in the parents own their kids. And the, and the schools listen to the parents. But we have laws being passed in California where if kids talk about transgenderism or the, or the teachers want to push that on kids, they don't have to go home and tell their parents. What about no more 26% inflation causing Americans to choose between gas and groceries? It's going on right now, big time. Joe Biden's been in office four years. Can't blame this shit on Donald Trump. Can't blame it on COVID. COVID's been over a long time, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you why we have inflation. Because Joe Biden shut down our energy. Day one in office, he shut down our energy and signed executive orders. We were energy independent under the last administration, which caused us to boom. He signed executive orders for the border, the economy, everything, and destroyed it. It had nothing to do with COVID. What about no more firing federal workers, soldiers, and nurses who refuse the experimental jab vaccine? It's my body. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. How about that? You morons out there, it was an experimental vaccine and you took it. Why would you? I mean, it's experimental. Okay? It hasn't gone through the rigorous clinical trials. That alone should scare the shit out of you. Also, for you morons, 99.7% of the entire world population, if they got COVID, they didn't go to a hospital or uh, die. That's a fact. Just based on that one stat alone, use human logic and go, I don't need the vaccine. Just a thought. I'm not, I've had some of my friends affected by one one gentleman in the air of transparency that died at 52. He was a doctor. A lady coughed in his face. And she did call him the next day and said, I have COVID and coughed in his face. But he had pre-existing conditions. He had heart trouble at 52. He had diabetes. And he was a smoker. He died two days later. So I'm not saying it didn't exist. But overall, the joke. We would have had herd immunity at 18 months without it. My opinion. But, you know, just no more firing of federal workers and nurses and, and people that refuse the experimental jab. Because there'll be another one. We're trying to get another one. How about that? Does that make me a bad person? No more allowing the capture of federal agencies by industry, FDA, CDC, NIH, FCC. No more, no more uh, making Americans fearful and sick. Monkeypox, another vaccine. Perfect timing around the election. What about no more woke, racist, Marxist theory? That garbage taught in public schools. What about no more pornographic grammar books in schools? I took my daughter to a, a, a library and there was a trans book in there and there was pornographic material of a man and woman on top of each other and a, a man and a man and a woman and a woman in another book. What's up with that? You think that's appropriate? One side is pushing that. What about no more violent rhetoric, rhetoric about against political opponents on both sides? Is that, see, I'm a fair guy. See, I don't, I don't wish that on Joe Biden or anyone. No more, no more. Uh, you know, Hitler killed six million Jews, and this guy's Hitler and didn't do anything. And he's already been president. And we were all doing well. You know, more people died under Joe Biden of COVID. Let me tell you what a what a fraud this is. And I, I've said this to someone; they can't even answer. When Joe Biden got into office, day one, they one. In the press room, they asked him a question. They said, hey, how are you going to stop COVID? And they asked the same question to Trump. And he's like, hey, it's just got to work its way out. He's like, excuse me? Yeah, it's just got to work its way out. It's a virus. It's just got to work its way out. Guess what? That was the last question. Just think if Donald Trump said that. That was Joe Biden. It's just got to work its way out. Now, by the way, in the era of fairness, what Joe Biden said is true. No one had any empirical data. You can't stop a virus. It came out that Fauci made up the six feet, the mass. The number one epidemiologist out of Oxford said masks don't work, and now you got California bringing masks back right now as I speak in this podcast. It's disgusting. Masks don't work. It's been proven. Even the N95, you morons. You morons driving around your car with the gloves and masks. You're stupid. 
Jesus Christ. I push back against that stuff on day one. I got kicked off planes. I got kicked out of Costco because I believe in America and my rights. And I turned out to be right. I worked in the pharmaceutical sector for Merck, Pfizer, Novartis, and I consult right now. And I believe in Big Pharma. Let me just say that. They've done some good. But of course, yes, they do. The number one advertisers in other countries, they don't allow the advertising that Big Pharma does in the United States and pushing drugs. I don't believe in that. But overall, they've done some good. But, you know, the pharmaceutical companies lost. I could get into this trillions. They never had a big drug that's come out. And when you bring out a vaccine and you pass laws that say the pharmaceutical companies have immunity and you can't sue, it's harder to bring a drug to market than a vaccine. And they haven't had a blockbuster. That's why in the last 10 years in the pharmaceutical sector, you've seen a lot of consolidations of pharma companies because they can't come out with any new drugs. And sometimes they come out and then they, they, there's black box warning. I was part of selling some of these drugs that got black box warnings. They all had problems, a lot of them. And, uh, so they came up with this vaccine, gave themselves immunity. Vaccine had a lot of issues, wasn't clinically tested properly. But trust me, this COVID uh, vaccine's been around for a long time. Just didn't come out in the last year. Put together by the uh, U.S. government military. So like I said, no more violent rhetoric, not just on one side, but no more violent rhetoric on both sides. How about that? But one side was pushing more violent rhetoric at the other. Calling a guy Nazi, calling him Hitler, calling him a fascist, which, sorry, wasn't true at all. Turned out to be all fake. But you don't see, see, the Republicans don't play hardball. They, they didn't do that to the other side. They could have. They could have got on the White House steps, which they should have done every day about Joe Biden's cognition. You never heard Mitch McConnell, who should have spoke about it. Never. Crickets. But it's disgusting. And you do that kind of rhetoric, we have a lot of mentally disturbed people in the United States that hear that stuff on the news and they believe it. And they know it. Mentally disturbed. What about no more Democratic puppets who pretend to be president while Americans have no idea who is really running this their country? I mean, who is running the country right now? Joe Biden is cognitively deficient. He's still president. They did a coup against this guy. He's been somewhat more real now, I have to say. He doesn't seem happy about what happened to him. Uh, the Democrats didn't have a primary. You're a Democrat. That's your party. You guys cheated. You didn't let the people vote for the uh, leader. Camilla Harris is polling at 6% in the state of California before she ran for president. When she ran last time, she only won uh, in the Iowa caucus primary. She couldn't even win that. Got 1% or something. She dropped out. She's a horrible candidate for the Democratic Party. You know? And you're going to tell me she's going to beat this guy? Because you, I mean, no way. No way. I mean, did you see Camilla Harris off teleprompter on Friday? Rather articulately that the 2024 election is packed with some stuff. I mean, that she wouldn't do anything different than Joe Biden. She went on the tour because she is losing the race right now. So they said she's got to get out there and do some interviews. And she had a horrible week on Stephen Colbert, on The View. But it's amazing to me that, I mean, I could do a better job in thinking off the cuff and showing empathy. And I mean, she can't even be a good actor and not have prepared answers of what you would do from Joe Biden because she's running as the change candidate. And she's no different than Joe Biden for you people voting for. It's going to be the same, but on steroids, Marxism. You know, even the CNN, I mean, the incident in Harris's latest pronouncement ripped by critics as inarticulate and unpresidential. You know, when we think about what's at stake in this election, well, it's packed with some stuff. Some fundamental stuff. I say rather articulately, she says, as a campaign event in Scottsdale, Arizona. I mean, she, I mean, she often rambles when she's off script. She rambled and ignored concerns on Thursday during, did you see that Univision town hall about receiving exactly zero Democratic primary votes? Someone asked her a question about that. 
So the, you know, the question was, how can you clarify this, the whole process, and you were elected, nominated, a voter asked her. She replied by speaking about the coronavirus and the endorsement from Liz Cheney. <laughs> and while, per, you know, commending Biden for uh, stepping aside voluntarily, which he didn't, he was called by Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, and said, this can go one of two ways. We're going to do the 25th Amendment, but you better step down. He didn't want to leave. No one wants to leave power like that. That's why all these senators on both sides don't leave. And you got people like Mitch McConnell are still there. Other people that don't. Nancy Pelosi should retire. That's why they all need term limits. Critics often attack Harris as an empty political shill with intentions to do or say whatever is needed to get elected. And that's what she's doing. You know, 49% say she's just saying what people want to hear, and only 36% think she says what she believes. A recent economist, YouGov, and that's the economist found. I mean, it, her ramblings, ladies and gentlemen, have contradicted her campaign strategy. Walsh trying to fire this gun. And there, now she does this ad with men, and it came back so weak and so pathetic. Because they're losing the male vote and they're losing the black vote. I mean, I, I respect Obama as far as an orator and a, a good speaker. It's not hard to do that, though, ladies and gentlemen. But to come out and insult black people like he did, that, you know, you're not going to vote for the, the first woman candidate. We're voting on the plumbing now. We're not voting on the policies. Vote on the plumbing, the color of the candidate. The fact that she's the first woman, who cares about her policies or if she's going to be successful? And she says she's going to be the same as Joe Biden. She's not the change candidate. She's in right now. She can make changes. Joe Biden said they have equal share. She's in all the meetings, yet the border's still open. But she goes down to the border now. I mean, what a phony and a fraud. She could have gone down to the border the last three years. She didn't, but now she does. Come on, people. I mean, she failed that whole week in all those interviews. When she tried to talk about policy, uh, the 60 Minutes interview was a disaster. I mean, would you have done something different than President Biden during the past four years? The view Sonny asked. She said there's nothing that comes to mind in terms of, you know, I've been a part of most of the decisions that have impacted this country. She replied, ladies and gentlemen, that's the most impactful statement of this entire candidacy of this individual. She can't think of anything she'd do differently than Joe Biden. His policies are going to be continued on steroids. On the CBS Late Show with Stephen Colbert. You know, Stephen Colbert, by the way, used to be really funny. And he is talented. But he's gone off a cliff. Harris refused to, again, to provide any specific policy from the last four years she would change. What would the major changes be and what... And uh, what would say stay the same, Cobalt asked. I'm obviously not Joe Biden, Harris replied with a canned answer before giving a rambling response about what this next generation of leadership will look like. During the 60 Minutes interview, Harris did not answer the question when asked about the southern border invasion, for instance, Harris claimed that Congress needs to fix the border. But she's been in office for three and a half years and hasn't done shit. Ladies and gentlemen, since 2021, the Biden and Harris administration reversed or undid many of Trump's air border policies. For example, suspending the Remain in Mexico policy on the administration's first day in office, like I stated. That's what fucked things up. What is a mistake to loosen the immigration policies as much as you did? The CBS correspondent Bill Whitaker asked Harris during the 60 Minutes interview. It is a longstanding problem, Harris claimed. <laughs> and solutions are at hand. And from day one, literally, we have been offering solutions. We need Congress to be able to act to fix the problem. You want to know why the last border deal failed? that she said Donald Trump didn't go along with in 86 and got them to 86. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to know why the border deal failed? Because it was a shit deal. Let me tell you about what was in that border deal because 99% of the public didn't read the deal. That was a shitty bipartisan border deal 
and they were forced to put something out there because they were getting such backlash in the border. Number one, it codified catch and release. It still let in 1.8 million illegals. It funded sanctuary cities. Number four, it funded NGOs moving illegals. Number five, lawyers for illegals funded. Work permits to illegals. Nothing to deport illegals. Nothing to deport illegals. No immediate wall funds. Weak asylum screening process. And also in the bill was $60 billion to Ukraine. That's why it didn't fucking pass. Because it was a shit bipartisan bill. I got to speak about this guy, uh, the Tampon Tim guy. I mean, J.D. is dog walking this cloud. Tampon Tim fumbled his lies. He fumbled his statements in that debate. It was pathetic. It's obvious to anyone who watched, including left-leaning CNN correspondents who were forced to admit, and they begrud you know, begrudgingly had to admit Trump running May J.D. Vance utterly destroyed Camilla Harris VP pick Tim Walz. Tampon Tim fumbled it up and his lies crumbled. Even the Mockingbird media admitted defeat. In post-debate coverage, CNN reporters come in advance, trounced Waltz, who appeared unprepared for the challenge. J.D. Vance came into this debate to land a bunch of punches, and he did, noted CNN, Abby Phillips. He landed a lot of punches in between all the uh, in this, you know, necessities that he did and in between all the bullshit. He landed a lot of punches. Bullshit, I added that line. And she added that the thing that really stood out to me is that Tim Waltz did not seem prepared for it. And he was like a deer in the headlights. You know, this guy's a clown. Did you see him in in the Michigan game? In the football game? Yell and people were yelling at him, Trump 224 baby at him during the Michigan-Minnesota game. And he, he was seen flipping off in a picture, yelling at, at him. I mean. It's a little unpresidential. You just got to keep waving, my friend. You know, he's the you know he's the VP running mate of Camilla Harris, who's seen flipping off fans at the football game between the University of Michigan and the University of Minnesota, and some yelled "Trump twenty four baby," and he was walking by. So, you know, I don't know. Call me, call me uh, not bright, but flipping off fans forty days out from a pivotal, or excuse me, thirty days out from a pivotal election. Uh, I don't think this guy's a serious person. I mean, these aren't serious people, ladies and gentlemen. They're not talking. They, they're offering no policy. She has no policies. The other side is offering policies and making at least an effort. My God. <laughs> you know, the problem with Governor Tim Waltz is he's thin skids. And you want to talk about a whiter than white guy to put in there. I mean, it just goes to show they want someone who's bought and paid for by communist China, because this guy is. Why the hell you wouldn't choose the Jew, Josh Shapiro, out of Pennsylvania and lock that state up? Just from a strategy point of view, if I'm in the room for Democrats, is beyond me. This guy's a clown, and he destroyed his own city during COVID. Uh, so it's interesting that Waltz's attendance at the college football game came the same day that former President Donald Trump attended the football game between the University of Alabama and the University of Georgia, where he received a loud welcome and was seen interacting with crowds of the people at the game. You know, and what, what's really disgusting is when Harris goes on the trail and tries to claim falsely, and it's already been debunked and CNN was forced to admit that she has in the past, that Donald Trump left us with the worst economy since the Great Depression. I mean, come on. It was in fact growing when he left office. And you know who noted this? Rubio in an interview I just saw. It was during COVID and, and employment was so high because she shut, because we shut down the government. Rubio noted it was during COVID and employment was so high because we shut down the government, we shut down the country. So Harris said Trump lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs before the pandemic, which is also false. Manufacturing jobs rose under Trump by 451,000. Okay. You know, and also he noted that he fact-checked Harris's claim, also a staple of Joe Biden's economic speech, is that Trump 2017 tax cuts only benefited the rich and corporations. Ladies and gentlemen, 
and this is noted and there's research on it. I've already looked it up and I've read the bill. He did not just cut corporate taxes. He cut individual taxes. That's a fact. The MSNBC interviewer also pointed out that Harris is planning to expand the child's tax credit, the child tax credit, or to offer assistance with mortgage down payments could be done without approval from Congress and uh, the help of Republicans. If you can't raise corporate taxes or if, or if the GOP takes control of the Senate, where do you get the money to do that? Do you still uh, go forward with those plans and borrow? Um, as uh, they noted at MSNBC, Harris did not want to answer that at all. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a clown show. And uh, I don't want to beat this with a dead horse. I just, you know, I want everyone to do well in this economy, whatever color you are. I want everyone to get reach their dreams. The American dream is being taken away with all these regulations in the states. To be an entrepreneur, I don't believe in that. Look what's going on in Cal or New York. Major players, investment, real estate investors, pulling money out, bringing it down to Florida. Just ruining this country. Look what this dummy AOC did with these this Amazon jobs that were going to be created. And just stupid. Just stupid policy. Just stupid policy. Enough is enough. Just open up California. 20% entrepreneurship. Be nice to small businesses. Stop taxing the shit out of them. Stop having all these people come in. I remember... You know, small businesses used to be like four hundred dollars a year, but now you got all these codes, and the health inspector comes in. This, this, this fee. These guys got to pay five thousand dollars a year in fees. Some of these small businesses is a joke, just so these clowns can make some money from the government. Leave people alone. Let them make some money. God, you know, I don't want to get into this too much, but it looks like Diddy's in trouble. And you got 120 accusers. But I, I'm just going to say this about Diddy. The number one mistake you make, and I come from a law family, never settle. Never settle. Should have never settled that case with Cassie. You should have fought it. And uh, you never settle, man. And he's settling left and right. Now you're going to have people come out of the woodwork. Some people are being exposed. I don't believe in that. People find false lawsuits to get a quick payout. Um. But some of this stuff is tragic. When you see the videos with Usher, he looks really scared when he's a young man at 14 years old and with this guy. And you, you see the stuff with Justin Bieber, his mother giving him up for 48 hours with this guy. Unbelievable. What are you, you're, you're a disgusting human being. But, you know, people want to be famous and, you know, parents will do whatever it takes and they turn their kid over to Diddy. Bottom line is this guy was having after parties. I believe everyone's innocent to prove it guilty. See, I believe in due process in this country. So I'm not going to form an opinion of Diddy yet. I've seen a lot of the evidence and and uh, a lot of, you know, people have come out. A lot of people are scared because they know they've been to these parties and there was sex going on. He did bring in prostitutes, it looks like. But, you know, we haven't heard all the whole side of the story yet. So I don't pass judgment right away and neither should you. And that's the same thing with politics. So, you know, this this attorney has got 120 Diddy accusers. Uh, so he said it goes pretty high up the food chain with some powerful people. Uh, bad boy records. Many powerful people, many dirty secrets, he stated. The law firm uh, collected pictures, video, and texts. I just don't think that video is going to see the light of day. This isn't uh, like the politicians and all that stuff, but it's people, powerful people in the music industry. I saw the special on Clive Davis. He was bisexual. And he was sleeping with people, in my opinion, uh, based on that special and what I've heard in the music industry. I used to live in Atlanta, Dallas, Austin, these guys. I used to date Nigerian girls. We used to go to these parties with Levin, Lenny Kravitz in downtown Atlanta. And I, I met some cool people and was invited to some epic parties. And I'll just leave it at that. So I kind of know what's going on. Um, it was very strange. But... Diddy thought he was untouchable. And the worst thing that can happen in business, I will say this to you in your personal life, is when you get a God complex. Never get a God complex. Don't get too big for your bridges. Um, you know, you got these poor young boys that were told they were going to be able to audition and go to the studio with these guys. And all of them are trying to land a record deal. And they're given possible, you know, drinking while they're there. And there's the, their drinks are tainted with tranquilizers. and 
And this guy, this lawyer said he's got medical records showing the boys were drugged. Drugs were found in their system. Weird drugs, drugs you probably never heard of, he said. Uh, horse tranquilizer. Uh, so, you know, there's some weird shit going on. But there's, there's, I mean, some of the guys I like, I like 50 Cent. He, 50 Cent's got a good head on his shoulders. Uh, I used to listen to him back in the day, 50. You helped me out with some girls, and I appreciate that, man, back in the day. And uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders. And a lot of these guys knew what was going on. Some guys stayed away from him, like Denzel Washington. Seems like he ran out of a party because of the after party got a little weird. So, I don't know. But uh, I think people need God in their life more. That's what I think. And uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to talk on this, which kind of goes to business. I'm going to lead more with real estate, but um, I just think it's important what's going on with politics right now. My big thing is freedom of speech, and that's why I'm talking about it. You know, America is falling apart right now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, our national priorities are in dire need of restructuring, in my opinion. You know, when you talk about infrastructure in this country, and if you're well-traveled, you go to Dubai, you go to Abu Dhabi and other places, and you go to Singapore, it's the, the architecture, the cleanliness of these cities is just gorgeous. And we're supposed to have more money than these countries. Trust me. The richest place in the world is Washington, D.C., more than Saudi Arabia. So much money is going through there. And there shouldn't be one poor person in the United States, one city, one building, one pothole, in my opinion. You have collapsing bridges, buckling roads, overheating railroads, deteriorating power lines. You have contaminated water. For Christ's sake, they just shut the water down in Long Beach at one of my properties. I got a notice in Long Beach um, that the, they're, they're all a pipe burst and there's the water is contaminated. Uh, you have outdated public transportation, overtaxed power grids. The power grid could blow up. I'm worried they're going to do that before the election. Trust me. I recommend get a generator, get a lot of water, get three months of food supply right now. And you know, you look at the ports. I used to go to the ports and go down uh, for some development stuff with some mentors. You get aging ports, and waterways, unsafe tunnels, uh, highways, and it's just this insufficient telecommunications assets. Uh, it's, it's all becoming, um, you know, frequent hallmarks of the American way of life. It's just out of control. When you look at the bridges, and our our planes are setting on fire. And our planes are refurbished. It's just a fucking joke. More than 42,000 bridges across the country carry about 167 million vehicles each day are in despair. It is estimated across the United States between 2024 and 28 to... Uh, that there's going to be widespread power grid failures. So no wonder the U.S. infrastructure received a C- minus on the infrastructure report card, ladies and gentlemen. It's falling apart. You know, we are unprepared to deal with floods, hurricanes, wildfires. We have politicians stealing the money, giving it to people that aren't even Americans, and these poor people in North Carolina and Florida. Thank God the Florida disaster wasn't as bad as we thought. It was going to be a Category 5, it turned out, but still... There were deaths, and it's terrible. It's terrible that we don't want to help our own people. It's really disgusting in North Carolina in the mountains. You find out that BlackRock and these companies, uh, there's lithium mines up there, trillions of dollars. They've been trying to buy the land. Uh, very shady what's going on, in my opinion, and they don't want to help these people. Just like the Maui victims, they gave them 700 bucks. They gave these people 750 I'll give the administration the benefit of the doubt. They're going to give them more money, but they haven't gotten any money. And I know people there, they're getting screwed. I'm making phone calls. So I don't buy it. They're getting screwed. They don't give a shit. So this has been an epic disaster by Hurricane Helene. It just makes the failure by the government to put the needs of the American people, you know, first. Painfully evident, in my opinion. Painfully evident, in my opinion. You know, entire towns are underwater. Railroads have collapsed. And, uh, you know, portable water is scarce. More than 1.5 million households are still without power. I just think that our national priorities need to be reexamined, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, why politicians can play partisan games, because it's an election year. People have died. And you've got to look in the mirror. And you're playing around with our tax dollars. And the infrastructure of our, our states and country is so important. And it's being overlooked, in my opinion. And people are stealing money, going out the front door to the back, 
We're giving it to Ukraine. It is being funneled back to politicians. Trust me, they're not going to give Zelensky all that money. Only 25%, 30% of that money goes for weapons. Bullshit. These guys are stealing the money. Christ, they found a guy with a suitcase and $5 million, uh, a Ukrainian oligarch. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, I just think with all when it, when all is said and done, because it's coming out now, the public square, Twitter, people are waking up to this shit. The problem is you push too far because when you start hurting people's pocketbook, they start to ask questions. But when all is said and done, and the bread and circus distractions and sleight of hand political theater being trotted out in order to keep Americans distracted, deluded and amused, and insulated from the government's steady entroachments on our freedoms adds nothing of real value to the lives of the average American, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to fix what is broken in this country. It has been a clown show the last three and a half years. And I would argue, under the last administration, if they just tried to work with this guy and not demonize him, they said they were going to impeach him from day one. If they worked with him and gave him half the respect they gave Barack Obama when he had his first press conference, and they said, how does it feel to be president, sir? They didn't treat Trump like that when he became president. If they just gave him a little credit. You know, right now, according to Times Magazine, throughout the country, millions of Americans don't have access or can't afford broadband internet service. In excess of 2 million people without power, basic plumbing. Politicians have been weak and inattentive. So... And this is just not in the hurricane-run cities like Helene in Florida. We got major fucking infrastructure problems and plumbing problems throughout the whole country. You know, my opinion, this election is about the plight of the American people who have continued to be treated like a permanent underclass. And I'm sick of it. And I see, I'm not some guy who just hangs out with rich people. I have a lot of rich clients. I hang out with average people too. And I see a lot of people struggling. And it's sad. Um, you know, when you, when you go down a street and there's two, $3 million homes and on the side street, you see people sleeping in their cars, there's something wrong. I would say this though. I would also say this too. Anyone who believes that this presidential election will, will bring about any real change in how the American government does business is either incredibly naive, willfully out of touch or oblivious to the fact that as an in-depth Princeton University study showed, you know, we now live in an oligarchy that is of the rich, by the rich, and for the rich. When the country spends close to $10 billion to select what it is for the intents and purposes of glorifying homecoming king and queen occupying the White House. <laughs> So, I mean, even under a Trump presidency, there's so much bureaucracy. Trump can get in there. The State Department, you know, has they could cut that down to 25,000 jobs. So we'll see. But government's so big, bloated. Um, I do think there's going to be some changes at the border. Your free speech is going to be protected. They're going to rein in some of these wars because people have had enough. They know the populace is getting unsettled and they got to keep, they got to keep, uh, you know, the Roman Empire. They got to keep people somewhat happy. Uh, before we start all killing each other. But it's just getting out of hand. It's just getting out of hand. And um, there needs to be some changes. And I think one of the big changes is, is the infrastructure in America. We need to start investing here in manufacturing, our factories, our streets, our roads, uh, our water. I'm very concerned about that. Our power grid. Uh, we need to take care of that stuff. I mean, when Pete Buttigieg gets all this money and he says, oh, they only bit seven or a ridiculous amount of charging stations. You remember that clown? They just took the billions of dollars, just like California took $24 billion for homelessness. They didn't even do an audit. There was no audit. It's not on the books. They don't know what they did with the money because they just took it. And they, that's what they do. They get, see, they get money allocated for homelessness or a green company, and they never open the green company, and they just steal it. So, you know, the American empire is, is approaching a breaking point. Um, and it, this is exactly, 
you know, I study some of this stuff. The scenario that President Dwight D. Eisenhower warned against when he cautioned the citizenry not to let the profit-driven war machine endanger our liberties or democratic processes. You know, so if you remember that, he recognized, Eisenhower, the consequences of allowing the military-industrial complex to wage war, exhaust our resources, and dictate our national priorities are beyond grave. Hey, don't come after me, guys. I'm all for the military. I'm all for the military-industrial complex a little bit. Uh, but you guys, Raytheon, all you guys, I mean, can't you take a fucking break? Do we have to be in war through every administration, for Christ's sake? Remember, Democrats have been in tw control, what, 12 of the last 16 years? You want to blame uh, the Republicans for everything? Democrats have been in control 12 of the last 16 years, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just ask you guys to take a break a little bit. I'm all for you guys making some money. But, I mean, come on, man. Please, all these wars, and deaths, needless deaths to sell arms. And I'm not saying I follow all these Navy SEALs and special ops guys. What wonderful people these are and these men and women. And they're telling their stories. I, I really like listening to those stories and reading books about that stuff. And the things they've done for God and country and to make our life safer. While my pussy ass sits at home in a nice house. Uh, I just think we need to appreciate our veterans more. And like I'm saying, I don't, there's people that make money in the military and they provide a valuable service, but we just need to have a better balance is all I'm saying. Is that fair to say? We need another balance. Do we have to go in and invade all these countries and we fund both sides? We're arming one side, giving food to another. It's just a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke, you know? So listen to Eisenhower's warning. He was ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time, ladies and gentlemen. And now I'm going to get off my soapbox a little bit. Uh, but I just want a free country for everybody. I want everyone to prosper. I'm sick of all this hate and talk of racism. It's all bullshit. One side is pushing racism more than the other. I'm sick of it. This is the least racist country in the world, if you understand the global geopolitical system in other countries. I'm not, I always say this on my podcast, so please. We're the least racist country in the world. Okay? Period. We're not perfect. By no means. But where else can LeBron James make a billion dollars? Where else can Sidney Poitier win an Oscar in 1968? Whatever he won, right? Even uh, Morgan Freeman, that phony right now who wants to go to war with Russia, said we shouldn't have Black History Month. He goes, do we have Jewish History Month? He goes, I'm an American. We're all Americans. I don't need a Black History Month, Morgan Freeman said to Don Lemon. Don Lemon, who had the most authentic moment of his life, said, yeah, I don't know why, Morgan. They, they, I just see my, I'm on this network and they see me. I have to push this race thing. And Morgan Freeman says, I'm a millionaire, multimillionaire actor. A white guy and a, a white agency gave me a chance in my 40s. And you, Don Lemon, you're hired by a bunch of white guys at CNN. You're black and you're married to a white guy and you make millions of dollars as a black guy at CNN. What a racist country we are. I, I, I've had some of my best bosses. My, one of my, I've had bosses black. I've had women. I've gotten along with everyone. I've had diverse, I hate that word diverse, diverse teams. You know, it was necessary. It was great. I exclusively dated black women for eight years. More than Don Lemon dated black men or a lot of these other guys. So uh, I want prosperity for everybody, every race. And I don't like the hate on one side I'm seeing. And I'm seeing one side saying everyone's going to be prosperous. And sorry, the bottom 20% of wages went up under Donald Trump. Black wages went up more under Donald Trump than Barack Obama or Joe Biden. That's 100% fact. And people being hurt by illegal immigration. And this is what's pissing black people off. People being hurt by illegal immigration more than any other race are blacks. And one side is pushing open borders. So who are you going to vote for? You have closed borders, blacks do better. Period. If I was black, I would be outraged by what Barack Obama said. Now I, I want to end with this and I want to speak to the young men out there. Because you guys know I like to talk about health and fitness and I used to be immersed in it. And I don't want you to make the mistakes I made. And I made some mistakes in health and fitness. Um, 
They've done a lot of studies on this. A lot of people get into lifting weights. For, we'll use lifting weights bodybuilding as an example. Because number one, they want to put a shell around themselves because they're insecure. So they want to create this shell of muscle. Number two, they're short. A lot of short guys get into bodybuilding. They have a Napoleon's complex. They're short. It's true. And number three, they have a small penis. So they want to compensate. It's fact. They've done political. I've looked at all the psychological studies. I've been all over the world and talked to women. And women, women have said to me, they said, Tim, when we find out a guy works out five to seven days a week, we, we don't want to date him. We, we say, you know what? He's probably really bad in bed. And th- one woman said this. This is for all you young men out there. And she was speaking to the latest Olympia of uh, classic physique. And uh, I, I, mean, I don't watch this shit anymore. But, you know, you only got like three or 4,000 people to go to the event in Las Vegas. You know, the, the Olympia for men and women and bikini and all that. I appreciate the hard work bodybuilders do to sculpt the physique. It is a very hard um, sport to be successful in. It's a 24-7 job. Like a lot of sports, but really 24-7. So I respect it. It's not a healthy sport, period. And my point to you young men is, this is what a woman said about Chris Bumstead. And she she said, I can't speak for every woman, but I have never found extremely muscular men attractive. In fact, I've always been somewhat repulsed by abnormally huge muscles. Yuck! For one thing, I feel like if they spend that much time on their appearance, there must, there might, uh, there must not be much beneath the surface and in the bedroom. I've always gone for brains and charm. Beauty fades, baby. But, you know, I look at how tall someone is, their face, their beautiful face. I don't care if their muscle is 16, their arm is 16 inches or 18 inches. And then you, you're ju- just bored with the shell when the beauty fades, the muscles fade. She says, my husband, for example, has spent much of his free time on intellectual endeavors and is now worth over $37 million and takes very good care of our family. I stay home with our kids and never have to work because he's rich as fuck. And I will continue to do so while they are little. We also always have things to talk about. He is smart and can and uh, can more than keep up with my wit. Now, I will say, I've always found him to be handsome. But he's not a fit guy. He's got a gut. He doesn't have time to spend at the gym. That stuff doesn't matter to me. I just love his face and the fact that he can still and he takes care of my kids. I just want to say that's beautifully said. My point is, guys, work out, take care of yourself, but don't be obsessed. The more beautiful a girl is, the more insecure she is. When I was in my best shape, I never got dates. And one guy told me, he's like, you got to hide your physique tip. Don't be the guy that wears the small shirt when you wear a large. And when I hid my physique and didn't talk about working out, I met more girls and I got more dates. You understand what I'm saying? Be the guy that puts classical music on your car, not ACDC. Don't wear the Terminator glasses. I like the feeling in the gym, that rush that I get. I need it. It's a drug for me. That's why I do it. If the, if the benefit is I get a little cut, a little bigger arm, this and that, that's great. But I'm just telling you guys, I, I was obsessed with it one time where I'd walk around with tuna in my bag. You're talking 238 ripped, 315 sets of eight on incline. And I can still crank out now because I like it. But I'm not as obsessed as I was. And it, it's, it can be very unhealthy. And if you don't compete, you shouldn't take drugs. Don't take drugs. Well, my point is, if you're doing it for the opposite sex, you don't need to be obsessed with it. They don't care. They don't care. Would you rather have $20 million in the bank, be an intellectual? Girls like guys. Well, let me put it this way. And I said this last time on my podcast. The guys getting all the girls are the skinny guys with skinny jeans and skinny ties. And I know a lot of people all over the world through my travels back in the day. And now I talk to a lot of people. And it's so true. It's not the douchebag wearing a small shirt who should wear an XL. Or a medium. He's wearing a medium, he should wear an XL. Wearing Terminator glasses. No. It's not. Okay? I dated body brother girls. More than a few liked it, but didn't love it. I like girls with soft abs, not a six-pack. Sorry. But overall, I'm just going to tell you. The better shape I was in, the worse I did. And I met another one of my training partners that was the same way. And that was a long time ago. And when I was 24, a guy gave me a life lesson that I'll never forget when I was in Spain. It gave me a life lesson, and I mellowed out. 
but I still like to train. And I'm telling you, stay in shape, take care of your heart, take care of your organs, work out. Full body workouts are better than lifting weights. You can get ripped. And I'm going to tell you, if you get, if you uh, just eat right, like I'm eating right, right? I'm, I'm just bored of training. So I don't, I don't feel like training because I'm busy working, but I'm eating right and I'm stretching every day. Like I do a 30 minute stretch session. I'm getting in great shape without lifting. So it's all, it's all built in the kitchen is my point. I'm just saying, don't be obsessed, take care of yourself. But for you young men out there, you're taking a lot of heat. All these people pushing beta men, be a man, be an alpha male, stand up for yourself. Be tough. That movie line from the heat, you got to be willing to walk in 30 seconds. Someone gives me shit, I walk in 30 seconds around the corner. I leave them in the dust. I don't care. I'd rather be alone than deal with bullshit. Here's my personality. I'd rather look at 15 cars in a garage with a glass of wine, about $900,000 in cars and Cobras and all this shit, than deal with some stupid broad or whatever, or some fucking friend that's just negative or what have you. I'd rather be in a car with a book, in a garage with a book and looking at my cars. And that's the power I have. Because you got to learn to be alone. So you, you don't want to be alone your whole life, but I'm just saying, you got to enjoy your alone time. You got to walk alone. That's the best way to live. This is the Mac Oligarchy Podcast. I'm your host, Tim McClone. We are going to start doing some interviews. I just want to vent right now. I got a lot of people on the docket that I want to talk to and some important people. I just don't want to do it right now and I don't have time. So I'm just going to vent to you every now and then if you don't mind. But I just want to say this is a beautiful country. We all need to come together. It's the most consequential election. And what's on the ballot when you look at this big picture is freedom of speech. And that's the only issue you should vote on. Not abortion, not the other issues. Freedom of speech, and one side wants to take that away. Mac oligarchy out. Because I always tell people, if you've never been to Texas, you've never been to Nevada, you've never been to Montana, you know, you've never been to Wyoming, uh, live there for a minimum of six 